Hi guys, I'm Kesha. Welcome to the channel and welcome as always to our coffee time to discuss books and horror. And today I am bringing you some horrifying memoirs because sometimes our own personal struggles and stories and hardships are the scariest ones. It's coffee time. Now, I'm aware that these recommendations are not going to be for everybody because these stories are all quite messed up. They are quite disturbing, especially when it comes to a lot of stories that include abuse and all the trigger warnings you can imagine. But I figured I've never made a video on a couple of book recommendations from memoirs that deal with heavy topics and are kind of giving us an insight on someone's a hardship <laughs> to put it lightly so I just wanted to make a quick list of some memoirs that you can pick up in case that you're interested horror is quite personal and what is horrifying to me might not be horrifying to you but these six books that I am about to recommend you they all deal with either true crime stories or uh, something that happened to someone and they decided to write about it, but they're all quite heavy topics as I've mentioned before So please make sure to check all the trigger warnings for the following books that I'm going to mention But horror is also something that I feel like works best for me if it's based on true stories most of the time Those are the times when I am truly horrified by why I'm hearing or seeing or reading I noticed that a lot when I watch true crime documentaries how horrified I am by all of these stories which are actually true, that actually happened. These memoirs are not supposed to be pleasant reads, they're not supposed to be fun, they're just going to give you a different perspective on life in general and you're gonna kind of allow you to experience what some of these people had to go through and like I said I know it's not going to be for everybody because these are quite hard to read but I just wanted to put this video up in case somebody is interested in this type of memoirs and would like to dive a little bit deeper into the true horrors of life itself. Memoirs sometimes have the power to inspire us. Someone might be writing a memoir in order to uplift others and other people might write them to kind of process their own trauma, to tell their own story or to also help others to see that they are not alone and somebody else also went through something similar. What makes this truly horrifying is that you know that everything that is on those pages is something that actually happened to someone. We go from cults to war to child abuse, so these books are quite heavy. The first one is actually not a novel but a graphic novel and it is called My Friend Dahmer by Derf Bakderf and this is a story in which someone that went to school with Jeffrey Dahmer decided to write about it. So Jeffrey Dahmer is not just this horrifying cannibal serial killer that we know, he also had a childhood which is hard to imagine after you have probably watched the Netflix show which was amazing um, and if you are familiar with his story it is one of the most horrific stories you know true crime stories that I have ever heard. So Derf Back Derf has kind of crafted a graphic novel telling the story of what kind of kid Jeffrey was at school where everybody just knew him as Jeff and kind of being the oddball. So in this book we are not going to see Jeffrey Dahmer the monster that we know but we are going to get an insight on the time where Jeff was just going to high school and was just you know struggling with life and their own per his own personal demons but all in all he just seemed like an odd but regular kid. You're going to see him not quite being able to fit with his classmates. Basically the author is giving him a lot more heart than we would give to someone like Jeffrey Dahmer after we know everything that happened but I thought this was quite interesting and also easy to read since this is a graphic novel because it gives you kind of an insight on his life before everything happened and it might also give you a better understanding on his troubled youth. 
Our next story comes from War. The book is called First They Killed My Father, A Daughter of Cambodia Remembers by Long Ung. And this is a horrifying tale about the Cambodian genocide. So it is one that um, is going to be quite hard to read about. I don't know if a lot of people are familiar with this story, but brace yourselves for probably a lot of tears and a lot of rage. When our main character was five, she was forced to flee because obviously the war was coming, but the next years of her life were filled with death, famine, disease, and everything a child should never experience. This was one of the worst genocides in human history and the author is going to go through everything that she experienced and as I've mentioned this is one of the ones that is the hardest to read and process also knowing that this is what humans did to other humans and the cruelty of humankind. But it's also the story of this little girl and her family and her strength through it all so it does have a little bit of an uplifting, I guess, uh, side of things, which is that she did make it out alive of this genocide. The next one is not particularly a memoir, but it contains a public confession and an autobiography. And this one is called The Strange Case of Dr. H. H. Holmes by John Borowski. Known as the world's first serial killer, he did confess to 27 murders. But there are some sources that actually say this guy ended up killing around 200 people. That is insane. If it actually would be true, not really sure. It's just a rumor. You're gonna get to read the story through his own words, which is quite sickening. Again, very heavy topics here to be discussed. So, you know, just protect yourself if these are stories that you are not ready for. It contains three fully illustrated books about the story and also it contains the confession that Holmes did himself right before he was executed. So you're gonna hear him confess to his crimes with his own words. The three stories that are available apart from his uh, confession in autobiography are Holmes' Own Story by Herman W. Mudgett from 1895. We have the Holmes Petitzel case by Detective Frank Geyer from 1896. And also the Holmes Castle by Robert Corbett from 1895. So these are old materials that are all put together with his confession and his autobiography. So it is a very quite, you know, unique way of understanding the whole story from different published books and his own words. The next one is a book that did not come out that long ago and it is called In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. So Machado has never been someone to do things straightforward and her unpublished memoir is no different. This is a memoir of her life and how she survived abuse. She goes really deep into the psychology of things and how her past has deeply impacted her new relationships in life and you know the past is always there to haunt us and things that happened to us when we were children definitely changed how we relate to other people when we are adults. She goes deeper involving themes like folklore, time travel and she also explores this idea that a house could be you know your home it could be your safe space but it could also be your worst nightmare it could also feel like your own prison for years the author struggled to share her story about a same-sex um, abusive relationship and now she has managed to pour all of her trauma and experiences into this book it has been really loved by the book community so if you're looking for something a bit more modern this might be one because the other ones I feel like are you know were published a bit longer ago. The next one is a book that is also quite heavy <laughs> like all of the ones in this list and that is Stolen Silence. My story growing up in a polygamous sect becoming a teenage bride in breaking free of Warren Jeffs by Elisa Wald and Lisa Pulitzer. The theme of this book is similar to the Netflix documentary called Keep Sweet 
Frey and Obey that talks a little bit about the Mormons and their polygamous marriages. So Elisa was a member of the Mormon church and when you live in this community they are completely separated from civilization they live far away and they have their own commune and in there basically kids who are 14 years old they're married to whoever needs a new bride and it is absolutely horrifying you would see men sometimes even men on their 80s that have like 10 wives and it is just absolutely horrible the things that they do and how they brainwash these little kids to follow this religion that you know honestly i want to respect everybody's beliefs but when you are abusing children that's just not okay so if you watch the show you probably know a little bit what to expect from this book it's gonna go a little bit in detail into her experience in this cult and how she made it out. And the last book deals with something that I find truly fascinating which is Munchausen and if you don't know that is when a parent kind of treats their kid as if they would be sick even though they're not in order to keep the kid still being a child forever and keep it at home and being able to control everything about the kid and there's been some movies done about the topic and this is now a memoir about it. The book is called Sickened, the memoir of a Munchausen and it is by Julie Gregory. So this is a bizarre type of abuse in which the parent kind of makes the kid sick so that they are dependent on them and it is quite like the title implies sickening to see a parent do this to a child. And that was the reality of the author of this memoir. Her mother kept her sick, made her sick. She had to go for x-rays, she had to take medication, and she wasn't even sick. When she reached adulthood, she realized that she was not sick, that everything she had to go through was because of her mother. I love that the book, apart from telling her heartbreaking story, also includes some of her medical records and really takes you through everything that she had to go through um, during her childhood until she was old enough to understand that it was all her mother. All right, you guys, so these were my six recommendations of memoirs that are telling a true story that was absolutely horrifying and disturbing. I try to pick books that have different themes and topics. They are all horrible and I know this video like I said again might not be for everybody but I just wanted to give you guys options on some of these memoirs in case that you are interested in any of these topics learning a little bit more about the author's real experience and what they had to go through. I feel like when it comes to me when I read non-fiction books it tends to be this type of memoirs or uh, non-fiction true crime stories. I feel like it's because I'm truly fascinated by the human psyche and everything that you know turns out sometimes into monsters and why people would go to those extremes. I don't know it's just something that I've always felt is fascinating even though the stories are horrifying and disturbing and sometimes it's hard to believe when you're reading these stories that they actually truly happen to someone because they are just so horrible. But anyways, I hope you guys still enjoy the video even though it's quite dark, I know, I'm aware. Let me know if you um, want more of these type of recommendations, also like other type of non-fiction horror books and I'll be glad to put a little list for you guys. Let me know down below if you have read any of these memoirs or you have any other recommendations for this type of books down below for everybody. Thank you guys as always so much for watching and I hope to see you all as always in our next coffee time. Bye!